Gary, J Dog. <laughs> What's up, Gary? Iron Heads. What's up, Tom? I gotta learn it's not unusual on this stupid thing. This dream to come true And as it approaches Stallion! <laughs> I can't believe I'm through At times Oh, how at times For the prize Yes, the prize I thought I knew What's up, everyone? I just did a cool interview with uh, Jesse Blaze Snyder, the son of Twisted Sisters D. Snyder, and he's also his own musician for years. So I got this song in my head. It's the price we gotta pay And all the games we gotta play Makes me wonder if it's worth it to carry on Cause it's a game we gotta lose Though it's a life we gotta choose And the price is our own life until it's done What's up Todd? Convinced Mrs. <laughs> I, if my wife gave me angel, I'd be playing like this. Heart attack. <laughs> oh, welcome, 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 everyone, to uh, IllegalSteroids.com presents Gearing Up, Mikey's favorite program of the week, and we have a very special guest. I saw her on the feed. Chaos Nutrition Sponsored Athlete. Let's get her on. I'll have to ask if the pronunciation is proper. Gemma Kai Pari. Because if I'm botching that nation up, please fix it. Tell me I'm wrong and I will fix it. Hello. What's Hello. up there? Hello. <laughs> How, am I pronouncing it close or not even close? Say again? Gemma Kai Pari. Is that even close? <laughs> Gemma Kai Pari. I, I said it right? Gemma. Gemma, okay. There you go. <laughs> Gemma Kai Pari, and she's sporting the Chaos Nutrition shirt right there. She's a Chaos Nutrition sponsored athlete. Her uh, <laughs> Instagram page is very, very lovely. I suggest that all you guys definitely go check it out. Uh, it's, you'll see the the uh, the link on the post here, but it's Gemma G E M M A dot Kai, same spelling like Kai Green K A I and. Pari dot P A R R Y. So you reside in the UK, right? I do, yeah, in Cardiff. How's the uh, how's what's going on as far as with the lockdown and everything by you guys? Um, do you know what? It's really quiet. It's weird to live in the sea center and nothing's moving mm. at all. So it's very strange. Yeah, but I can uh, imagine. It's like I'm in New York, so it's like that. I mean. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like in New York. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's surreal when you see Times Square and there's like one car and maybe two people yeah. walk. <laughs> it is very strange, though. But um, uh, I, th some of the stuff on your page, now obviously being a New Yorker, the Coyote Ugly thing really <laughs> popped for me because I, I went there one time and I mean, after the movie came out, it became like a kind of a tourist. Yeah, yeah. Movie. So we went there for a couple of drinks and then uh, there's also another bar called Hogs and Heifers right near there, which is like a biker bar, which is kind of like a little more underground. So then we ended up hopping there. So uh, tell us a little bit about Coyote Ugly. I actually didn't know there was one uh, in England. Oh, yeah. So we have a few bars in England anyway. So we had, um, we had Manchester, we had Liverpool, um, we got Birmingham, and then we got Cardiff, and we've also got Swansea. So you've got the two in Wales, three in England. Um, 
Oh, no, honestly, it was amazing. Like, I, so I don't now work there. I did work there. Um, okay. It was, like, the best experience of my life ever. Like, the best yeah. place to work. <laughs> it was a lot of fun just hanging out and drinking there for obvious reasons. So, I mean, like, it, did it get kind of wild in, uh, in your place? Oh, it's crazy. You know, it's, um, <laughs> you know, how many jobs do you have where you can get up on a bar and dance? You know, you, you're being paid. Yeah, okay, you get us with customers and stuff, but to get up and then just dance whenever you want. The best song comes on, you're like, yes, and you just rock it out on that bar. It's <laughs> awesome. It's absolutely awesome. It's so empowering. Yeah, I'm sure it must have been a lot of fun. How long did you do that for? It was about two years. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, when the movie came out, you know, it was it was a really, you know, interesting movie. Obviously, the, the women in it were gorgeous. And so it was a lot, uh, you know, it, it was a guy kind of movie. But then I ended up going there, like I said, I think it was like a bachelor party. We were in the limo and just bouncing all over. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> and that was one of the places the guy wanted to go. I mean, it was all right. But, you know, it was it was really crowded. It was a Saturday night. So we really, it was hard just to get a drink. You know, and uh, so we we ended up at the uh, at the other place and a bunch of other joints after that. Um, so, uh, how long have you been into the fitness thing? Because you're in great shape. I mean, I'm looking at your stuff here, <laughs> your Instagram page. I mean, uh, you have obviously a, a abs. You're shredded. So, uh, oh, how right. long have you been into the fitness stuff? And what's your aspirations and goals in that uh, world? Well, um, I probably went into fitness about four years ago, and to be honest, I think it was, it was actually a breakup. <laughs> um, I just wanted to feel better in myself and, and to get some self-confidence again. And I found bodybuilding and training, and I found this whole new world, which had a lot of support network with it. And I got into the gym, I started lifting weights, and I fell in love with it. That was it. That was it. It was like the ultimate high. You know, lift those weights. Every time you hit a personal bass, it was just amazing. So now it's just, about having fun with it, I guess, rather than taking it. So I don't take it too seriously. Um, I just like to have fun with it. But it was like the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, and uh, obviously you said it was a breakup. So you, you had the eye of the tiger, like, fuck him, I'm gonna show <laughs> <Yeah>. him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I bet he regrets that decision right now. Because if Probably. he sees your pictures, shame <laughs> <on> him. <laughs> um, you, obviously, you have a lot of tattoos, too. So why don't you show us some of the tattoos? Oh, I'm covered. Give us the story about some of them. I mean, most people get tattoos that have a special meaning uh, and or story behind Oh, them. so I have a lot of tattoos. No, not really any meaning, to be honest. It was just a case of me finding what I loved. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oh, that is fucking cool. That is I have, some, I have some of my legs, but I, I'm not going to pull my pants down. <laughs> why not? We're all friends here. Yeah. Nothing underneath the trousers. Oh, <laughs> even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. So you, you really, you just like tattoos. You don't have like certain ones that have, uh, like there's no tattoos for like a it's, memorial it's, of a family member or something like that. Yeah, I've got an angel on my back, which was, um, so my mum's best friend was my next door neighbor. But okay. She was kind of like my best friend. And then when she passed away, and I mean, this was when I was about 17. Um, when she passed away, I had that angel done, and it was just okay. so that there was always someone watching over me, you know. Because there you go, that's a big that, thing. But it meant, yeah, there's that one. This woman had a special meaning to you. She impacted your life, yeah, a certain way, and that's how you honor her memory by doing that. So that's pretty cool. Um, how'd you get involved with chaos? Well, do you know what? I um, originally it was through Body Power Expo. I met Rich, mm -hmm. and um, it was through working with 5% originally, I then came into chaos. Um, Rob messaged me and we got in contact and then I started working with them. The way they work, the, the family and the way they, um, you know, I don't know, the support network is, is amazing. Um, yeah. the, the, they are so motivational and to make, you know, I watch their videos and I think, wow, you know, I can do that. I want to be that strong. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, I've just followed them, followed them since. Yeah, so I mean, you, you said, uh, so you were f with 5% before that, and it's mm -hmm. a lot of the chaos people are X5%ers, and yeah. obviously Rob being one of them. So 
Uh, that's also with, I mean, I've known Rob for many years. We did a lot of work with 5%, with Rich, with the magazine. So I've known a lot of those guys for a long time. And to, uh, and to, to work with them when they have that same type of mentality, I think is a, it was a winning formula. And, and Rob is, is capturing it, but putting his own personal uh, side, you know, stuff on it. It's not just a copycat, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's kind of kind of carried on the legacy, I guess. You know, it's it's yes, such a, yeah. it's a it's a rare mentality to have, you know. And mm -hmm. to see people who have that mentality, it's so inspirational because you just want to you want to join in and you want to get in there and you want to be in that you know be in that gym with them and you want to lift those weights with them and you want to push yourself a little bit harder. And it's great to have those mm -hmm. people around you. Yeah, and I think what made five percent. What attracted me to it in many, many different ways. Obviously, I'm into the hardcore uh, magazine. It's very hardcore, like a female bodybuilder on the cover. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody does that anymore. So we've done that regularly. And we had Rich on the cover, obviously. We had Martin. We had Jens the Beast, uh, Dal's Guard on the cover. So we like that. I like the fact that they had this, you know, they're not trying to hide the fact that they're using juice. The mass is fucking cool. Tattoos are cool. We're yeah. not cutting them up for the judges. We don't give a fuck about competitions. So to me, that's what really turned me on to it was that Piano was the kind of guy that didn't give a fuck about getting on stage. He wanted to promote, you know, himself, the product, the people that were supporting it. And it had nothing to do with who won the Mystery Olympia or the, or the uh, you know, the fucking uh, the, the UK <laughs> uh, beef pro or some bullshit. Yeah, of like course. <laughs> That's what really turned me on is that it, it wasn't, it used to just be competition kind of guys that were plugging fucking products. And then Rich kind of he broke the mold, if you will, made his own thing. So how did you guys get involved with the 5% crew? Um, yeah, you know, I can't, I don't, I can't remember how I did. I think I went online and just kind of applied for it and said, you know, I'm really interested in doing it. And I went to, to Margate, Kent, to do uh there was a bodybuilding competition there and we did a little pop-up stand it was the first thing i've ever done okay. i then just started training i was new to the whole thing i was in awe of every person that was in there because as you can imagine their bodies were phenomenal you know they're, they're they're in such good good condition um and that was kind of that, that pulled me in i mean i tra i traveled about maybe eight hours to get there just <laughs> to do this five percent um pop up just because I wanted to be involved with it because I believed in that mentality again you know and yeah. I, again like you said there for me it's not you know I don't jump into competitions I've thought about it but I don't know whether I would do it mm. I enjoy training I love training you know my happiest times are when I'm in the gym yeah that's that's my happy place and you know it's it's not about winning a competition or having what my face plastered all over something it, it's just enjoying the fact that it, it, i don't know it's, it's the gain from it i guess yeah yeah no i mean it makes sense like that's a lot of the guys in that crew weren't you know like paulo was a competitor obviously but mm. the, the majority of them really were just fucking mass monsters you know they yeah. were just <laughs> <It's> huge <laughs> and women too big ladies and she angela was actually in five percent also at one time, Angela Salvagno, she's a IFBB pro and Ooh. she does uh, um, the adult films, you know, female bodybuilder yeah. adult movies, but she was actually with 5% for a little while. Um, you know, uh, I don't remember what year, maybe like 15, 16, somewhere around there. I forget exactly when. Um, let's talk a little bit about Coyote Ugly. Fuck competing, be the best that you can be. Frank, Big Frank saying that. And I agree, there's <laughs> another perfect example. Big Frank was a, I, uh, was a WBBF pro bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. He looked great. And then he got huge. And I, to me, that was, you know, he looked fucking better like that because it was just like, holy shit. This, you know, it was, he was impressive as it was. And now he was double. So uh, he's one that tasted both. And he just said, fuck competing, you know, so. <laughs> any, any horror stories or funny stories from Coyote Ugly with like drunk guys like trying to fucking grab something that they shouldn't be grabbing? I, well, that, went, that went totally silent on me then. Okay, can you hear me though? Oh, am I good now? I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
uh, with Coyote Ugly. Any uh, horror stories and or funny stories of drunk guys doing the wrong thing to you while you were dancing on the bar? Because I'm oh. sure they Oh, do you know what? I remember there was one time. So most people were quite scared of me on the bar because <laughs> I was the kind of girl that got on that bar. And when I was on that bar, you knew if you even touched me, I would kick your ass. I'd completely <laughs> kick your ass. Like, you know, there's not a chance in hell you're going to touch me. Um, and that's like the, a, a huge rule is, you know, you don't touch the girls. And yeah. um, there was this one time I was on the bar, got on my knees, and I was literally just on my hands and knees, and this guy lifts, lifts his hands up and fully slaps my ass. That and oh, honestly, <laughs> it was so hard that I couldn't even, I couldn't even breathe. I couldn't talk. I couldn't even retaliate. I was in so much shock. I just sat there, and every one of the girls just went, We've never seen you like this. Um, and I just stood there like, oh, my God, what just happened? And within two seconds, our doorman had grabbed him and ran him out the bar. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah, that was that was, uh, that was a funny one. <laughs> yeah, no, he's got fucking balls to do that. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah, he has. Not, you know, if I could see if a guy, like, touches you, like, he's drunk and he touches your ass, but smacking it, I mean, yeah. what do you you were going to turn around and go, hey, okay, I'm out of here. Let's go to your place now. You know? Yeah. Did he think oh, that honestly. was going to pick up line? <laughs> God, honestly, I just, I'm glad I didn't see him after. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have kicked his ass. After I'd been off, after the shock, I would have just been like, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm the kind of person when someone badmouths one of the girls, I used to grab them, literally grab them, and just pull them over the bar and have a go at them. Uh, <laughs> I didn't take any shit. You know, at the end of the day, they're my girls. They will, they will always be my girls. And um, I was very protective of them, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I guess you got to be. It's kind of like, you know, you watch each other's backs, literally, you know. Yeah. <laughs> certain situations like you just mentioned. But I always, like, figured that there had to be some drunk assholes that think that they're going to get over and it's going to, you know, it'll be like their way of, like, making a, a hit and move on, on the girl. I mean, listen, I was bombed when I got there. <laughs> Every girl on that bar was a fucking, you know, a 10. Mm -hmm. But I still, you know, I wasn't stupid enough to think I'm going to just grab this girl's fucking ass. I mean, you know, I'm not only not <laughs> them by the bounces, it was just, you know, it's just fucking common sense. Yeah. Too. I, mean, I mean, any, did you ever like meet guys there? Like you ended up going out with or was it one of those things like you don't mix work and play? No, don't mix work and play. Don't ever mix work and play. It's yeah. um, it, it's one of the rules as well. Anyway, so um, but it's yeah, you don't mix work and play. It's okay. uh, you know, that's your workplace. That's a place where you can, you know, like I said, it, it's a job where you can just be you and you can kick ass. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, for me, you, you wouldn't want to mix it there. Yeah, no, I I understand. I mean, because then you're gonna, you know, you know, the guy's gonna come in there and you know, do something probably stupid. Yeah, they get jealous. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But I really, I dig the way you get, you guys dressed, though. You had the fishnets, the cut-off mm -hmm. denim shorts and stuff. I mean, it was like a raw, really hardcore, you know, badass look. And obviously yeah. the, the tats helped also. You know, it, it goes along with that whole fucking style. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, so what do you do? Uh, what's your, your regular career? Like, what do you do for a living? Well, do you know what? I was leaving Coyote to go into fitness. Um, and then this all happened. So at the moment, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, it's just um, working on myself, really, and trying to find what I want to do and what's going to be fun. Um, I try and help out as much as I can with different things. Um, I still help out with Coyote. You know, I'm still friends with the, with the GM yeah. of the bar here. Um, you know, so when they need help, I'll, I'll pop over and help them out still. So, you know, yeah. I just keep with that. But with all this going on, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. And even, I mean, obviously, they're closed, too. Mm -hmm. we play you know, all bars and restaurants, at least I know from where we are. Uh, I mean, and these, these places are taking a beating financially. I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. You lose a month, two months of mm -hmm. no, you know, money. I mean, I, I don't know how they're going to fucking survive, and it's a shame, um, you know, but it's just, it's unfortunate reality right now. Uh, you have well-being coach in your bio. What does that mean exactly? Uh, I just, I, I take a lot of time to... Um kind of listen to people. There's a lot of people who, who struggle out there, I think, and there's not that much, um, there's not many places they can go to, I guess. Not many mm. places that will listen and kind of understand. Um, you know, I like 
to help people bring out the better side of them. So when someone looks at a bad situation and I, they'll look at all the negatives, I'll try and pull them out of that and say, okay, so what is the positive you can learn from this? You know, you might have, you know, you've had a breakup and it was really bad and you were hurt, but from that, what did you learn and what are you going to go forward? And what can you, what, you know, what can you use from that to improve your life kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's it's not fitness related. It's more lifestyle, personality, that kind of. Yeah, I want to just kind of bring it into kind of both of them, I guess. I like I love the fitness side of things. It's not for everyone, you know. Fitness to me works with men, with, with mental health, especially, sure. um, and it it helps you to kind of, kind of calm down. Obviously, endorphins are flying, so you're happier. <laughs> um, but not everybody likes fitness, and you know, at the end of the day. You yeah. can't kind of push someone to go into a gym, whereas you can sit there and actually take a second to listen to someone, which yeah. makes a huge difference to a lot of people. Yeah, no, I, that it makes sense. I mean, that's not everybody's, you know, secret formula. Go work out. I mean, mm-hmm. some people will be torturous. I mean, they, <laughs> I'm being told to ask you about a magic eight ball. I have no. Oh, I'm guessing it's... Previous knowledge of what that means. Well, I have an eight ball tattoo. Okay, that's what they mean. Um, What does that mean? It it was just part of the design. (laughs) (laughs) I saw a tattoo eyes. Anything, right? No, oh oh my god, I'm I'm terrible. I am (laughs) terrible. You're better than me. I'm the world's fucking worst. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I am awful at pool. I can dance on a pool table, but I can't (laughs) play pool. (laughs) <laughs> I've never tried to dance on a pool table, but I think I can dance better on a pool table than play pool. Though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. We should do this. Table, I have to ask. It just—it's a natural question. Have I fucked on a pool table? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How is yeah. it? Is it? I've never done. I've tried. To. I've wanted to, but is it good? Yeah, it's not very comfy. Not very comfy. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, it's too no. hard. Sleep. Yeah, I mean. it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it gets in the way if somebody's trying to do that trick shot. I mean, oh, <laughs> you they, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Might go in the wrong hole, you know. They didn't call that <laughs> one you lose. It's the last the eight ball. <laughs> so what's your love life like? Are you married, single? Uh single. Single? Very happily single. single yeah. Now that happily after the breakup? Yeah, yeah, happily single. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, enjoying life now. So uh yeah. I can just be What me. does a single person do nowadays? Is like Tinder for every because I'm I'm married twenty five years, so I have well, I'm way out of the fucking picture of this stuff. Well, you don't really have any choice at the moment, do you? Tinder's the only thing, isn't it? You can't go out to a bar. I I was single. It would be great. Yeah. There's not much to do. Well, at the moment, you can't really meet anyone, so it's just... Well, yeah. But, I mean, under normal circumstances, Mm -hmm. something like Tinder, you you find it to be... I went on there once. Um, Like, this is the first time I've been on there, and I spoke to a couple of people, but obviously you can't meet anyone from there, so... I was all right. There's a few yeah. weird people on there. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my, my daughter met her boyfriend on, I didn't ask her which one, but it was like an online thing. Well, I'm assuming it was like that. And uh, she's been dating him only, you know, four or five months. And I love the kid. He's a great, a nice, respectable young man. He had uh, Easter dinner over with us. You know, he's uh, he's white. So that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So we, you know, so um, it works for people. It's worked for her so far. So you know, I don't know, but I, it would just, it, it's something to me that I think if I was single, I would definitely give it a shot. Why not? I mean, you got nothing to lose, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, because you can still go to, out to singles, you know, clubs and bars and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But why not? You know, maybe you can get something on it. Now, there's also a lot of like uh, sex sites like that too. That so I know I. Probably, <laughs> I know, well, then I would be on the, you know, justforlunch.com. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on what's on the, the menu you now. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. I don't even know what you want to know. I mean, well, like, I like, literally, I mean, what, I, I, what I'm just a girl. What are you fun, like? <laughs> well, I, I used to dance. Like I said, it was dancing was the main thing. Um, and training is, is the main thing. I... I before I did all this, I was a call center manager. So I went from a, a boring call center job <laughs> into a KOT. So you can see the difference in the two jobs. Absolutely. Um, that was mental. Yeah, but, but you were a manager. It, so, I mean, you had, you know, you ran the fucking show. That's, so mm-hmm. obviously there's a lot of brains to go along with that beauty. So it's not, you know, you wouldn't be running the show if it wasn't. So. Oh, yeah. So w- what is your, <laughs> Big Frank wants to know how you eat look. And I do as well. 
All right. Treats. Frankie, what do you think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Both Frank and I share a foot fetish. Yeah, and somebody it else we know too. I don't know if they want everybody to know, so I'll keep it secret. <laughs> do you have a foot fetish? Do I? No. no do you no like guys fetish. that, like, did you ever have a boyfriend that had one? No, I've never, but it's been a big thing now that people message me and say, can I have pictures of your feet? That seems to be a big thing now. The moment I turned single, I got a lot of people asking me for feet pictures, which I, I've never had ever in my entire life. I'm glad yeah. you didn't figure out those were all my accounts, too. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know that, though, I'm going to ask you. Now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But that, so do you, do you uh, oblige them or do you say, you know, weirdo, what do you fucking want? You know? Well, if you're like, going to pay me for them, them, if you're going to pay me for them, that's fine. I ain't going to. You're not getting it for free. Oh, so now we're talking <laughs> fucking smart. It's business. That's smart fucking business. Yeah. God bless you. I always <laughs> tell ladies, especially the fit ladies, do muscle worship things. You know, even yeah. if it's not sex and nude, po you know, take videos of, you know, posing or working out. Oh, yeah. Guys will fucking, you know. Guys love should it. Should start an OnlyFans just for feet. Lola is saying that. You can do yeah. that too. You can even keep your ID, you know. You don't mm -hmm. have to even show your face or your tats, just your feet. I don't know. Maybe do your feet have tattoos on them? On they top don't. Of them? No, 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 not okay. yet. You can mask them. You don't even have to worry about. You know, <laughs> un, you don't have to worry about them being unmasked. I mean, but yeah, feet. Uh, it, it's it's a big thing. So guys, pay for it's a big fetish thing. So yeah, guys, big thing. You pay for it. Any what other like weirdo uh, DMs do you get? Because I'm sure you get some doozies. Well, you know, I've <laughs> In like 33 years, I've never been sent a dick pic until I turned single. And then my DMs were full of them. It was just men masturbating and just dicks everywhere. And I've never <laughs> had that before, ever, right, okay? I mean, my, my ex is female, okay? So I've come out of a female-female relationship. And then next thing, everyone's sending me dick pictures. And I was like, okay, this is new. Uh, oh, okay. So you had no interest in that then, even if, not that it would be appealing, but I think it's a fucking creepy <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't see the appeal in, in someone sending a dick pic, I'm going to be honest. Um, but not that I'm going to have any interest, but if someone's like, hi, here's my dick, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's nice for you. <laughs> now, considering you were in a, uh, you know, you said your ex is a, is, was a, a young lady, have you gotten any propositions by other young ladies now they know that you're a single person? Yeah. Yeah, a few. Okay. <laughs> now, do they send nudes or anything like that, too? Uh, yeah, some of them do. <laughs> See, that's, you know what? Good for them. I mean, listen, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, I think that's great. So, um, uh, that, now, how did they know, like, you were single? I mean, I guess maybe you put on your Facebook or on Yeah, that, that was it. It was Facebook was single. Um Okay. And then obviously like Tinder, but that yeah, Facebook. The moment I put actually put single on there, that was yeah. it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, your 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 inbox was inundated, <laughs> cock and 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 you know vagina. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's one thing. Yeah, I think girls girls don't do that. We don't do vagina pictures. That's just not a girl just thing. Like, mostly titties, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I guess you work your way up. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of ladies on this uh, uh, in this program, also as part of what we call the MSM. Frank, in my mind, is fucking really yeah. knowing. <laughs> Frank knows me very well. <laughs> we have a lot of ladies in the MSM family, as we like to call them, that love, they're bisexual. They love mm -hmm. women and they love men. So um, I'm sure many of the Lola being one of them would probably love to, uh, to meet you in person one day. <laughs> Perhaps even as much or more than I am. And I, I would just yeah. watch. <laughs> but... Um, What's, what's really cool is that how you said that people respected, you said, in a relationship with whoever that person was. Yeah. And people respected that. They weren't sending these, yeah. you while yeah. you were a relationship, right? Yeah, it was quite impressive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'll see Lola. Yeah, see, I, I know Lola well. I know uh, many. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Crystal, Kim, um, the Steph, Leaf Girl, Steph, many of our young ladies on this, in this family are very interested in uh, in each other, um, mm -hmm. which is really good because uh, you know guys love that and and sex sells. You know, so being in the business, yes, just sell magazines. It's good for me. <laughs> um, so when you when you get these dick pics, 
Do you respond to any of them? Like sometimes, or you just like fucking delete them and just no, them? I just delete them. Yeah, I, I don't delete them. Yeah, it's just not, it's just pointless. <laughs> yeah. I'm no dummy. I call I call a beauty when I see one. See, <laughs> first dibs on. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, Joe, ask her if she's a freak like the rest of the family. Well, I will find that out slowly but surely, which is good. But I, I, I will tell you, I do get dick pics as well. Okay. People think that, and I've said this on the shows, and people laugh and break my balls for it. People think that I'm gay because I do a bodybuilding magazine. So a lot of times, guys, they want to get in the magazine. They think if they offer some kind of sex or whatever, they're going to put them on the cover. And I yeah. try to explain to them that I'm heterosexual, I'm old, I'm married, I'm a dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't care about your dick, you know? <laughs> but I do also get a lot of clip pics and things like that. Okay. And young ladies that, that are, enjoy the program as well. So those I highly encourage them to send yeah. me. And they might get a couple <laughs> and, you know, enough. Yeah. The cover is always, is always in the mix, though. I'm not bi, but she's gorgeous. Megan 13 is saying it. <laughs> well, I guess she would she would be bi, uh, I guess, if, if you guys had a chance to hang out. Um, so have, have you dated guys before also? Yeah, that did a bit of both. Yeah, okay. What is the biggest difference between dating a guy and dating a gal? Uh, do you know what? It's the emotional side, I think. With, yeah. with girls, it's just a total emotional, like, connection. And, but you become, like, best friends kind okay. of thing. Um, with guys, it's probably just, I don't know. It's been a while since it's been, I've been in a relationship with a guy, but it's, it is different with, with a yeah. guy. But with girls, it's that like emotional connection, um, which yeah. can sometimes be a great thing and sometimes can be the most awful thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always say, you know, I don't understand women, and I am one. So God help guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's I, I can understand. And Frank said a joke. He says that's how he got the cover. <laughs> 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 Sleeping with me, Frank. That was supposed to be our secret. My wife's gonna get mad now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. It's it's it's. I, women are definitely, you know, like it's, obviously there's major differences. But uh, like you said, like women can be complicated. So to have two women together could be double complicated. Mm -hmm. But also, guys are much more immature. Women are mature. Yeah. So <laughs> I would think that a lot of times if you're dating a guy and he's acting like a jerk, oh, this guy, you know, he's you know, stupid or whatever. All he wants to do is, you know, screw. And you can be with a girl that is not acting like that. And you can have, you can actually go and, see a show or something and mm -hmm. and it's actually pleasant conversation it's not just <laughs> goofy movie lines and you know grabbing your ass when nobody's looking kind of thing uh have you noticed that in the difference where it's a little more serious like the the actual interaction with one another yeah it is it is more yeah I, i'd say so yeah and do uh, do girls do what guys always do like oh i can't wait till we get home so i could you know do whatever Oh, yeah. Stuff. Hell yeah. <laughs> See, that's so fucking cool. I, I, oh, I, hell yeah. I, 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 you are a fucking genius. Go, go out for a couple of gem. cocktails. Go out for a couple of cocktails and then get in my sure, bed. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're like, oh, I can't. I'm going to get home. I'm going to freaking devour you. I mean, <laughs> now, if I was like a fucking guy that was at the bar next to the, and I, heard, I, I would forget about it. It would make my fucking life complete. You know, just <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> But um, so what do you think now? Obviously, you've, you've dated both. Do you feel your future is whatever comes up next? Or do you have your mind set on one or the other? No, do you know, I'm not even thinking about it, to be honest, at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the moment, I'm thinking about me. So whatever happens, happens. I think every day as it comes. Um, you know, if someone comes into my life, brilliant. If they don't, they don't. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just, I'm happy being me and just loving yeah. life. <laughs> You're happy being single and solo right now? Yeah, because well, yeah, if, if I want to go, if I want to do anything, I can just go and do it. If I want to, you know, if I want to fly out to the States when this is all over, which is the one thing I'm going to have to do now, like I need yeah. to do it. Um, you know, I can just go, go and do it. I like the fact that I can just get up and, and go and do what I want when I want. You know, I like that freedom at the moment. I, I totally hear you. No, that is... It's a lot different when you have somebody like a, you know, a steady person. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a kill, marry, and fuck question for you. You know how that goes, right? Okay. Uh, kill, marry, or fuck. So which one of these would you match up with those? Jason Genova 
I'm not even sure if you know who that is. I don't know who that is. You don't know who it is. All right. It's a long story. <laughs> okay. okay. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles. Okay. I don't know. Right. Let me just see who Jason did. <laughs> oh it was God, the first one. Wait, wait till that Google explodes. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, it's G E N O V A. <laughs> the clause. I don't know how you came up with that question with those names. I no. obviously I know the, the UK connection with the second two. Genoa is the he's the most handsomest man in fitness. Jason Genova, his uncle Ronald Person is saying. Um. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> What did you see? Oh, my God. Well, I'm just, I'm oh, just trying to look and see what... Do you what... remember when Frank just said something very, very uh, a smart? Good good call, Frank. Remember the kid that piano slap boxed? No, I remember. You don't remember that? Okay. It was, it was that guy, so... Okay. He's a, he's a very popular person in the fitness industry. He... Barely autism, he calls it. Barely one okay. percent. He's he's autistic. He's thirty three now. Mm -hmm. Nicest guy in the world. Um, but it's a whole cult following has come about over the past I don't know seven years from him. Where there are so many things like you might have seen some of the comments go. What the fuck are they saying? And it's it's all related to this Jason Genova character. Okay. So. But like Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles, like why would you want to fuck or marry either one of them? I Maybe wouldn't know. He's gonna die. You're gonna get his money. Yeah. That, well then, we'll go. We'll go for marry Prince Charles then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that that's this is a good. Uh, we'll get back to the dirty stuff in a second. I want to think I'm being a perv, or I forgot to be a perv. That my reputation needs to. Stay. <laughs> what did you think about Megxit? The whole fucking Meghan Markle fucking. Stupid shit. I think good for them. Like, really? Okay. Yeah, like, like you know, go and live your life. <laughs> you don't think that there was a little bit of a fucking slap in the face to the to the crown, though? Well, yeah, it would be. Of course, it would be. But um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm thinking now, would I want to be in a position where I was kind of having my life guided for me? No, I wouldn't want that. You know, you, knew you that. have free will. <laughs> wasn't a secret i mean yeah yeah true true but then you know he needed to make his decision then didn't he uh, he just went on uh, he just fucking got pussy whipped with her jerkin she think that's what it is he, he got pussy whipped i mean he, yeah. she caught shots <laughs> they moved they didn't want to get involved and now they're complaining they don't have no money and uh, fuck them you know what i don't know and listen i'm sure queen elizabeth wasn't happy there was a half a negro fucking coming into the oh. fucking room either <laughs> But she accepted her. Mm -hmm. She didn't talk bad yeah, about her. Right? And she's obviously an old-fashioned woman, the queen. You know? Yeah, she did. <laughs> That's not an easy sell to the queen of England. It ain't no. easy sell to me. Imagine the fucking yeah. queen of England. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, if they want to do their own thing, but then stay out of the... They're putting themselves into the fucking... TMZ and no. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, no. You just keep yourself. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna go off and do your own thing, then go and do your own thing. You yeah, know, you don't need. That's it. You, if you go and say, "Oh, right, I don't want to be in the spotlight. I don't want this. I don't want that." Then just go off and do it. Stay away from and the leave it at that. Yeah, and yeah. Stay with the cameras. Yeah, I mean, to me, the kid's stupid for doing what he did. I give him credit. He served his fucking country in the military. Mm -hmm. um, he had a lot of fun. He was the partier. He, mm -hmm. You know, I would have done the same thing if I was him. I would have been partying and having a great time. And then when he gets married, you know, he lets his wife dictate the thing. You, know, you, you, you don't marry into the fucking royal family to stay out of the fucking spotlight. Yeah, you, you do stay in the spotlight. Yeah. But the... Oh, the <laughs> uh, Megan says, I'm not boy again. But the queen's vag has to be ranted. She is kind of long in the tooth. We got to cut her a little. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, all right. Here, here's Big Frank's marry, kill, or fuck. Big Frank, of course. Martin Ford or Eddie Hall? How would you, where would you put them in which column? Oh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. This, 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 this. You have to at least give <laughs> Um, well, I'd marry Frank, obviously. 
I love Frank. Married Frank. Okay. I'm married Frank. I love Frank. I, I keep saying I'm going to go out to the States and, and go see him. So I need to. Um, who are the other two? Martin Ford and Eddie Hall. Oh, that's hard. So Eddie Hall, I trained with Eddie Hall in, um, in Stoke because I used to live in Stoke on Trent. So <laughs> I used to train with Eddie Hall. Um, Fuck Martin Ford, kill Eddie Hall, I guess, because he kill, because he'd kill me. He'd probably kill me if he, if I fucked Eddie Hall, he'd probably kill me. So I I'm fucking, him, I'm worry. fucking tiny. <laughs> I know, that, that's a tough one. You really, you know, usually you need one bad guy in that, like you yeah, in the you know uh, the the Pope, uh, fucking, uh, you know, I don't know, fucking uh, your favorite fucking uncle and 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 Hitler, you know. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, you know, that's, that's funny though. But, um, I found that the couples, when they get used to each other, a lot of times sex becomes an afterthought and, and is forgotten in the relationship. Yeah. Is that the same, at least as far as from a male point of view with the female is, do you see that as anything that's, rings a bell with you as far as it's more with the women but with the guy also do you feel like there's more or less sex in a relationship when there's two women as opposed to one and one no it's, you know it's, it's probably the same um mm -hmm. it, gets to a, it gets to a point where it, it just goes yeah this is amazing and then it goes ah okay yeah so yeah it's the same it's the same. That's you interesting. Got, you've got to try and keep it. You've got to try and keep it um, exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put you on the phone with my wife tonight. Maybe <laughs> talk her into something. But uh, how long was your relationship with this last one? Uh, about a year and a half. Okay, so that's long enough time to, yeah. to, to know each other and know each other's everything. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think it gets stale, for lack of a better term? I think you get used to each other. Like I said, it, I think it's it's a friendship thing, isn't it? You can't you kind of create a, a friendship there more than kind of sexual partners, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it's then that I, I think that that always affects it, and that's what it is. Um, yeah. You know, and and it's it's trying to keep something alive as well, and a lot of people don't tend to to do that, I guess. Okay. No, that's the solid solid response. My wife tells me that. Women don't think about sex as much as men. Now, she can't speak for all women, obviously. Mm -hmm. She's speaking for herself. But she's using that in, you know, in general conversation terms. So she's like, oh, all guys think about is, you know, sex. Women don't think about it. So I don't miss it because I'm not thinking about it. Is she full of shit? I don't think all women are the same because I, I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I go all the time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and and I'm sure there are many guys that don't think about it as much as I do. You know, maybe maybe, maybe. one in the whole maybe. world. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. But like when you're so you think about it a lot, you're alone. I mean, you know, obviously, my obviously, uh, I'm segue into what's your favorite <laughs> go to on on porn sites? What's your go to category? On porn sites, um, do you know what? I I don't actually watch a lot of porn. <laughs> um, really? I, I, yeah, I, I'd rather just have the right the real thing. <laughs> okay, so you don't do you don't masturbate a lot now that you're home you're out of relationship? No, not a lot. Not a lot. Okay, all right. No, that's listen. <laughs> I, listen, I I do because I don't get a lot of sex. Um, oh. Uh, <laughs> The uh, Iron Heads, Tom came came up with a great thing. He said, "Get her on juice; she'll think about sex a lot more." Are you? Uh, I mean, to me, you look you look no. big, but you look natty, though. Are you on any testosterone or any steroids? Uh, no, no. So no. I've um, no. I was that's on, the I, other I, thing. Guys like myself taking tests. If you already have a high sex drive, it's going to put it into overdrive. Yeah. Women. They, you know, my wife's, I'm 52, my wife's 51, so we're a little older. Her sex drive never was as high as mine, even when we met in our 20s. And she lost a lot of that sex drive, and she's not into fucking, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this crazy fitness shit. So she's not going to ever be on fucking juice. Um, so 
her sex drive is never going to come back the way it was because of that. So, but that's why if if you were on Juice, you probably would be. Uh, you know, oh, that'd be it. That'd be it. I have three favorite categories. <laughs> Um, oh, Frank has a great question. What are you more aroused? Who are you more aroused by, a man or a woman? A woman. Okay. Yeah. Good. That, I, that's just, that's I just, I just, yeah. yeah. They just look great naked, don't they? <laughs> yeah, oh, they look. They're amazing. <laughs> they're amazing, right? I mean, I just, I love the the smooth skin. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was ever a fucking queer, right? If I if I suck dick, yeah. <laughs> I would be definitely go with like a. Um, like a bodybuilder type of guy, maybe not on, you know, maybe not muscular, but I don't, you know, like to me, like a girl that bangs a fucking hairy guy, it's fucking disgusting. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't know. I, I shave my whole body just for, for myself because I'm a fucking maniac. But to me, guys that are hairy, when girls see them, do they, do they like, ooh, I want to play with his hair? Or are they like, get the fuck out of here. This guy no. looks like hair. No, no hair. Yeah, Not for see, me. You're, you're <laughs> You're into the, obviously the fitness look mm -hmm. for both for a guy or a, a or a chick, but yeah, I mean, girls are just like just the prettiness of them, like with the hair and the nails and all of that stuff. It's it's yeah. so it's so uh, prove it, Joe Frank. <laughs> <laughs> See, Frank's not a bear because he shaves, but if he had hair all over him with his size, you know that wouldn't be my style. I'd be <laughs> <laughs> when you're in your relationship with your women, are you a top or a bottom? Uh, I'm a switch. Ready both. Okay. Yeah. Hell you got a lot more fun. Extra in that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Is that somebody who's we shouldn't be cursing in front of? No. Well, I, they can't hear anything because it's through my oh, ear, earphones. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of girls who are into girls don't know this term. And I, I am fascinated by it because I think it's kind of an invented act by porn movie people. Tribbing. Okay. Girl on tribbing. girl tribbing. Tribbing. I've never heard tribbing. Okay, see, all right. Basically what tribbing is, is <laughs> one girl gets on top of the other, usually mm -hmm. on an angle, and they rub clits together. Like almost she's fucking her clit with her clit. Okay, like, so it's like scissoring. It's like scissoring, <laughs> but it's more missionary. But okay, a, you know, okay. like scissoring is kind of you know you're more yeah, kinda, you know, twat the twat. You're not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that is not in the regular practice. It's not no. of the, 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 the girls because <laughs> it looks it's excellent. I mm -hmm. highly suggest after the show masturbate to tripping lesbians. And okay, you, I thought I'm going to do that. You will bookmark it. <laughs> but see, I, that, see, that's every time I ask somebody, my point gets proven because I, I think my theory is it's an invented thing because it was like without a strap on, how are you going to fuck? You really yeah. can't fuck. You can only rub. But they make it. Very true. The act almost looks as if they're, they're like the girl's fucking her because they're rubbing. <laughs> But she's like fucking nailing it, like you know, it's got to hurt, you know, it's cut. It's off. gonna take a lot of energy. Putting ice on their twats and shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> when you make a girl's nipples hard, that's called the pointer system. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the recommendation, Joe. Leaf girl Steph, she's one of one of our maidens, and she's our sex and relationship columnist, and she enjoys a, a, a beautiful lady. She can appreciate. Uh, a beautiful woman too, so uh, I'm sure she's enjoying it. I got uh, we that maybe that could be a future article, Stephanie. Tribbing is it real or is it set up for reality TV kind of purposes? <laughs> so, <laughs> Buy straight or gay, just go to the clip. <laughs> Megan thirteen, I gotta follow you if I'm not following you already because you're coming up with some fucking gems here. <laughs> um, Who walked in? Is that your buddy walked in? Yeah. <laughs> Have them come and say hi. You're you watching this. Yeah, she's not going to come and say hi. Why not? She's shy. She's not doing, make not doing makeup or hair or anything. Who cares? <laughs> Look at nowhere. You can't go to the barber. She's probably watching it on her phone. She's watching on the phone. I come didn't even know she was watching come it. Next to her. <laughs> you see, it's like a 10 second yeah, delay. 10 second yeah. She should come on the show and say hi and give her, she can plug her, her Instagram. 
So he's saying you should come on and say hi. No, it's not happening. Oh, all right. <laughs> Is she a family member or just a friend? A friend. A fuck friend or just a, like, uh, you know... <laughs> Okay, so the, we're going to stop this. That's why you now. don't need to masturbate, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, we started off a little slow, but we're having fun. All right, now, that's cool. You didn't... <laughs> no problem. Oh, my God, you know, now, now I'm terrified. I don't know how many people are watching this that I know. And um, <laughs> I'm going to get myself in a lot of fucking trouble. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to get you in trouble. The last thing we want to do, you're cool. I'm hoping one day if you do come to an expo in the States, because I do stuff with Rob at the Chaos. Yeah, movie, yeah. Uh, we'll, we can get to meet each other and, uh, and do it. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I, I want to keep you uh, out of trouble and all of that. <laughs> you travel a lot, other, other different countries and stuff? Oh, I love traveling. I love traveling. Yeah. Uh, What's your favorite, favorite place, place to go to? Thailand. Really? I love Thailand. Really? Wow. It's awesome. I can imagine. It's it's. I, I don't. Is the food fucked up though? Because it looks like it would be gross. Uh, I was all right over there, but um, you know, the person I went over there with, they got food poisoning a couple of times. So. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I stuck with the just. Chicken and rice. You know, I know I'm safe there. <laughs> they actually had chicken, right? Was you didn't have to yeah, eat, like well, every day. It, I don't know. I, they said it was chicken. I believed it was chicken. It could have been a rat. It could have been <laughs> whatever. You know, you don't know what it is over hey, listen, there. Listen, I go to the Chinese takeout. They say it's chicken too. I'm not always fucking. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a gray fucking chicken, you know, breast. Exactly. But, uh, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because my wife and I uh, were celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary this summer, and we had a European 14 day trip that got fucking canceled. Ooh. Because of this Corona fucking shit, we were we were supposed to go to I think six or seven countries. One of the trips we wanted to go to started in England, but they didn't have the dates that worked. That the dates didn't match up with what was good for us, so we had to do it Plan B and didn't have England having one extra day. I think in Germany, but it was France, Italy, Germany, Amsterdam, Austria, Sweden. Like all, it was a great fucking fourteen-day tour with all of these, you know, amazing fucking uh, locations, all these different countries. And now we're gonna have to bump it to next year because it's canceled for obvious reasons. So I'm kind of I'm kind of bummed out because obviously I've never been to been to Europe. So I was looking forward to it. Would have been really cool to uh to check it out have you ever been to italy i've never been to italy no oh, never okay. been there that's the one that's my main because I'm, I'm italian so that's like my main one that i was looking yeah forward to. but i was looking forward to france germany amsterdam just you know just it's just because it's you just and you can compare them afterwards you know and, and look at all the different things uh you know Megan is a friend of mine. See the quality perverts I bring you. Frank, you bring quality everything to me. <laughs> so that's cool, though, that you do love traveling. How, how is Thailand, though? Is it, I mean, everybody always pitches it. It's like, the, I picture the, the killing fields with fucking communist fucking, you know, you know <laughs> the skulls all over the floor and hula houses and fucking little kids. In, in dirty movies, is it really that fucking bad, or is it you know like a city in some parts? Well, it depends where you go. I mean, it, it's crazy out there. Um, I mean, I walked out. I stayed in Labua, Labua State Hotel in Bangkok, so the one from The Hangover. So I stayed oh, in there, okay. yeah, and you know that was fantastic. I went in there. The room's huge. It looks really posh. It's amazing. Then you walk yeah. out, and there's some guy dragging himself along the floor on a board. He's got no legs. And you're just like, what the fuck have I just walked out into? <laughs> it's just some guy just, you know, casually just dragging himself along the floor. And you uh, just, you come from this really posh hotel to like a shanty land. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. it's obviously, they have tourist places, so you're comfortable. Yeah. So you're that, comfortable, that, but then, you know, then there's real life there. How's the nightlife there? Because it sounds like it's fucking insane. I mean, everybody, like you said, oh, hangover too. No. It was, you know, it was hysterical with the lady boys and stuff. The nightlife, like is, that? the nightlife is insane. Um, yeah. I was in, I was in Pattaya, I think it was, and we went to a went to a bar, went to a go go bar. The girls were dancing on the pole, um, and some guy walks in with this entourage, no idea who he was, and he sits down where we are, and he he just puts his hands up. He said, "Right, drinks are on me, whole night." 
So he pays for all our drinks for the whole night. That did not end well. Well, kind of did. It ended up with me on the bar, basically in my underwear, because <laughs> the girls stripped me off. Um, my ex I was out there with was dancing around the bar everywhere, um, covered in lipstick. Uh, the next, it was just crazy. The next day we woke up, like they were just laid there with lipstick marks all over them. You know, everything was missing. I don't even remember going back to the hotel. Oh, that I is can a hear that. <laughs> you had your real life on Hangover movie. I did, much. yeah, hundred percent did. Oh, so you don't even know? So you you could have dropped fucking twenty loads that night, and you have no idea. It was Wouldn't either even amazing or you fell asleep right afterwards, and nothing yeah. happened. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> but you woke up in your hotel room, though. I did, yeah. Okay, at least you got. That was back. lucky. The two yeah. years. Safe and sound, but nobody <laughs> else was there when you woke up. Everybody else. No, was I was surprised. No, no, no one yeah. else was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would, Mikey, Mikey, Crazy Hawk in Hawaii says it sounds like a great night. I concur, Mikey. That sounds like a fucking e excellent night. It so do you have <laughs> lipstick all over you? Like, did you smell your fingers to see if it smelled like somebody else's? No, I don't, it didn't quite do that. <laughs> no, oh, oh, see, well, to be to be honest, like I, I woke up in the bath, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up, I was in the bath. The bath was like full. I was fully clothed, so. <laughs> and you were in water? I was in water, yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. You drown. I was in oh, only I a little bit of water. Oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't a lot. It just washed out whatever was in there. Just oh, God, fun. yeah. I just don't question why I was in there anymore. <laughs> that is, bro, that is fucking great. <laughs> Oh, that is some fucking story. And then, mm -hmm. so, the, the the worst thing is that you couldn't remember because it probably would have been a great, great fucking memory. Yeah, 100% would have been. But yeah, don't remember yeah. a thing. The last thing I remember is being up on that bar. That was it. How were the, how did this entourage look? Were they good looking people? It was one guy and a bunch of ladies? No, it was just, it was one guy and they just had security all around him. Oh, okay. So who were the ladies that were leaving the lipstick all over you? They were they were from the bar. They were the, oh, the older girls. Okay. They were the dancers. Yeah. Oh, I thought he had, um, you know, he walked in with a bunch of checks. I know, that would have been more fun. <laughs> oh, man. So <laughs> you're lucky you didn't wake up on the bar. I mean, yeah. <laughs> somebody probably walked you back. He's probably fucked around in the bar and they walked you back to the room. Oh, yeah. Could have done. <laughs> <laughs> in the bathtub. That is, that is a hell of a fucking night man mm -hmm. that would be great there's somebody that had surveillance video of that or a, you know that's been, yeah well, i want to see that one, i'd like to see that i'm getting a two minute countdown Gemma. it has been a fucking wonderful <laughs> uh interview i had a ball please give out any plugs that you want people to follow you wherever you want to do go ahead shoot no, i'd say come follow me at gemma.kai.parry on instagram and um, you know go follow chaos nutrition like i said Absolutely, they're, they're, they're my brothers, they're my family. So that's the biggest thing for me right now. Really cool. Do you got a chaos code you want to plug? I, haven't, I don't think I've got a code yet. <laughs> okay. Well, Because we'll, we, we'll we, we haven't got the products in the UK at the moment. So, later. yeah. Very cool. Um, yes, yeah, so somebody said we're going to get you on Anavar and get your sex drive up. So yeah. you need it. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Gamma, Kai, Parry, chaos nutrition sponsored athlete from the UK. Thank you so much. There you go. Give, Thank a, you. give us another one. Give us another, give us another one. Beautiful. On. <laughs> you look phenomenal, hon. Thank you so right. much. Great. See you later. Bye-bye. Right. There she is. Gemma Kai Pari. That, I had a lot of fucking fun. I had a lot of fucking fun. Obviously, uh, you know, I felt her out a little bit. I don't want to be nasty too much, but then uh, I couldn't help myself. So. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much because we're going to be We started with this, and we're ending with this. Guys, Friday, I, I, oh, Tom, I gotta talk to you. We gotta see which, which, which uh, guest we're gonna have on. On Iron Heads Sports Nutrition presents Ask Me Anything MSM Style. We will uh, see you guys on Friday, 3 p.m. Thank you again to Gemma from uh, five five percent from Chaos Nutrition. I'm looking at Kim Gilroy. I'm getting all all excited. Hi, Kimmy. How are you, baby? Later, guys. <laughs>